And there's, there's something about God being needed to, to supply for us. That, that right here, he's, he is giving them a daily opportunity to show that, that God was supplying. And it shall be, verse 5, look at this, all these little rules. It shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare uh, what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. So on Friday, remember, the sixth day, Sunday's the first day. So on the sixth day, on Friday, there would be twice as much manna out there to get. Why? Well, keep listening. So they, Moses and Aaron said at evening, verse 6, you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your complaints. And this shall be seen, verse 8, when the Lord will give you what you need to eat in the evening. And then at the end of verse 8, your complaints are not against us, but against the Lord. And of course, you know the, the whole story. Well, keep going down to verse 16. Every man shall gather it according to each one's need, an omer for each person, according to the number of persons, let every man take for those who are in his tent. Everyone had to gather an, a portion that they needed. There was kind of this, this amount God knows that we need. Remember, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus said a chapter before this, two chapters before for man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. See how he's paralleling this manna with his word. Each of us need to go into the word. That's where daily devotions come from. That we're supposed to go in and, and gather spiritual manna from his word. And uh, it parallels this. Keep going. Verse 19. And Moses said, let no one leave any of it till morning. You're supposed to eat it right away. Remember, this is their food. But this also is a picture spiritually. You know what some people do? They try and kind of like read their Bible once a week. Instead of every day coming before the Lord. When I read my Bible, it is a spiritual acknowledgement of this food thing. It's just like you shouldn't eat. We're not bears, you know, where we eat enough to last the whole winter, you know, and, and hibernate. You know, a lot of people, they do that. They go from one conference to another, and they try and gorge themselves, but there's no daily time. God says, just like food, physically, it, it's better. In fact, the, the doctors say that, that it's better if you eat a lot of little meals than just gouging kind of things. It's that little intake. Did you know that's the same spiritually? Instead of just, you know, once a week getting over OD'd on, on the Word, it's better to have incremental because when we, when we study the Word of God, we're saying, I need you, Lord. I, I need you to supply for me my spiritual nourishment. Keep reading. Verse 21. So they gathered every morning, every man according to his need. And when the sun became hot, it melted. Now, this is not um, a law or, or some bondage. But did you know that everybody in the Bible that is recorded, that had closeness to the Lord, all of them say something about starting their day. Now, some started their day with the Lord. David said morning and noon at night. In fact, he even said seven times a day. But there's something universal about everybody in the Scriptures, from Jesus on down, that they started their day with the Lord. Now, some of us are morning people and some of us are evening people. And if you're an evening person and you're, Springers and feelers, you know, springers jump out of bed and they're chipper and bright, you know, and uh, feelers, they get out and, you know, they can, they're feeling their way along. If you're one of those and you can't even keep your eyes open in the morning, then it might be that all you do is just, just in a small way, just acknowledge the Lord and then have your heavy duty Bible study when you're awake. But everybody in the Bible has the universal starting the day with the Lord. And then others end their day with the Lord, and others in the middle of the day. Remember Daniel left work? He was a, the vice regent of the world empire. He left work to pray on his lunch hour. Amazing. But look, if you, don't, if you don't do it, verse 21 says, the sun becomes hot. For the people that didn't go out and collect the manna in the morning, when the busyness of the day came and the sun came up, it melted. And did you know that's what happens when you start getting busy? All of a sudden your time is gone, and then... You don't have time with the Lord. And so it was in the sixth day. Look at this. They gathered twice as much because they weren't supposed to gather on the Sabbath day. 
And look at verse 24. They laid it up till morning as Moses commanded. It didn't stink, nor were there any worms in it. Do you remember some of the people gathered extra? They didn't want to go out every day. They didn't want to, you know, get manna every morning. And so they would gather a whole basket of it. And when they went back to their basket, it says it was breeding worms. Fascinating. And then... Uh, Look at verse 35. The children of Israel ate manna 40 years till they came into an inhabited land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. So that's the Old Testament picture of where this daily bread came from. Uh, and, And this idea of supply me is I want to see your hand, God, in my life on a on a regular basis. So this whole idea of prayer. Uh, which is how we ask for his supply, of the Lord actually meeting our spiritual hunger and our physical needs. All are tied together. What it says in chapter 16, that the Lord might test them. So, your prayer life and your, your waiting upon the Lord for physical needs, those two things are tests of our spiritual life. We pray in proportion to how much we think we need the Lord. Now, it's basically like this. Don't think we need the Lord. Don't pray very much. Think we have cancer. Pray all the time. Think we're going to lose our job. Pray all the time. Think our children are in trouble. Pray all the time. Don't think that we have any needs. Don't pray very much. Do you see how we're wired? That's just spiritual life for most people. And prayer becomes a barometer of how much we think we need the Lord. 